Welcome to Shorty Supercoach and welcome to another player profile. Now bear with me, Shorty's fighting off a reasonable cold. The crew's clearly defeated me. It's fair to say I probably didn't get quite the uh, recommended levels of sleep each night, but uh, nonetheless it was a bloody good time and uh, we're back in business now. I'll be getting back into work uh, later in the week, which is probably when this will actually be posted. But um, look, I wanted to continue on with these profiles. Round one is quickly coming upon us and um, I'll be doing a few more profiles, no doubt, but I'll also be getting into more of that broad stuff in terms of position and, and honing in on some of the more structural stuff. And um, yeah, I've got a couple of ideas to hopefully cater to everyone's needs and, and cover a, a wide range of players. But um, as I said, bear with me and uh, hopefully the voice holds up. But I wanted to take a look at Darcy Moore today. A bit of an interesting proposition. I was just scrolling through the forward line the other day and um, sort of looking to see if there was any little, you know, little gems around that 200 to 250 mark. I was also doing that through the midfield because sometimes that can just be handy just a guy who's a little bit better than your, your top draft pick or, or a rookie and could really show some very good signs. And <clears throat> I think more could be an interesting option. I'm not saying go and grab him, but I'm definitely saying watch very, very closely. Now, he's been a guy that has probably teased us for much of his career. Not in super coach. I mean, he's never really been considered because a young key forward isn't something that's very appealing. But in terms of a player, he's been much scrutinised um, as a pie. A lot of pressure has been put upon him, plenty of expectation. He didn't quite deliver as a forward, but Late last year, we saw him move to the back line and play more of an intercepting role. Playing on some key names, we saw him play on Lance Franklin, and uh, that was the game he did get injured, but he took a beautiful um, intercept mark, beating Buddy for pace on the lead, and um, he did go down, I think, in the second quarter, but um, showed plenty of signs, albeit I think it was only two full games in the back line before um, injury struck him down, but... His numbers and what he could be for a defender suggest he should be looked at. Now, his numbers previously aren't anything special. You know, averages of 54 in uh, 2015, 57, 61, and last year 48. Obviously, that is a bit injury affected. But it does see him very, very cheap. From memory, I think he's 238K. Normally, I've got all the deets right here in front of me on a notepad, but I was just cruising down the Great Ocean Road. And I thought, oh, look, I've got the AFL Prospectus. I bought that today. So I thought maybe I'll just flick it over to Darcy Moore and, and smash it out as I sit on the side of the road down at Fairhaven. So don't have the exact numbers as Shorty may always have, but uh, a bit of a spontaneous video. So what do I think of Darcy Moore? He's not in my team at the minute, but he's definitely in consideration. I really enjoy the fact that he's a guy who could enjoy a breakout season. Now, he's not going to come out and average 100, but I think he's played, what is it now, 53 games, I think it was, I was reading. And, and you know, he's the sort of guy coming into that fifth year, former top 10 pick, plenty of expectation, may have just found his role. Durability is a concern, but there is a possibility that he could go 80 plus. Now, that sounds like a fairly big call, but if you look at some of his numbers, intercepting is something that he does very, very well. I'll read a bit of a line from the prospectus um, just to put that into perspective. Um, in his two full games as a defender um, that weren't affected by injury, he had 18 intercept possessions, 9 intercept marks and 20 spoils. All elite numbers. So that's something that's got to prick our interest. Now, as I mentioned off the top, small sample size. And those numbers didn't necessarily equate to an amazing average. Again, going off memory, I think those two full games as a defender saw him score 91 and 68. Now in that 68, I think it was against West Coast, he had a lot of spoils, as I just said, 20 spoils, um, which always leaves the potential for him to, as the confidence grows, start plucking a few of those. But he's so dynamic in the air, he's a beautiful mover, and clearly reads the play very well. I suggest watch him closely through the preseason because I think often we see guys change a position, can we see them break out and things like that. 
when we talk about breakout players, they're normally priced around 300, 350k, sometimes 400 in the midfield. But him being less than 250k means that there's minimal risk. Now, some people might be looking at Corey Ellis or, or an Isaac Rankin or just a couple of those guys around that similar price in the forward line. I strongly suggest Darcy Moore. Now, of course the injuries are a bit of a concern, but he did play very well in the match simulation the other week, and I think he's a guy that has found his spot in the AFL scene. Now, very good things can happen when you find your spot. Now, he's danced around up forward, not quite feeling comfortable, hasn't found his real identity as an AFL player. Now he moves to the back line, looked very comfortable, looked very confident. And sometimes we see that, you know, players that we thought were destined to be gun forwards end up being extremely good defenders. And I think he's got a lot of those physical attributes to be very damaging. And we know the modern game suits itself to players that can peel off and those more agile talls, you know. He is 203 centimetres, but he's not lanky, you know. He's not a 203 of, of years gone by. He's quick, he moves well, and he's confident in the air. And I think, for me, it never looked as if it sat well with him that he was the main man in attack, where just seeing him down back, he seems a lot more comfortable and at ease that, you know, perhaps there's not as much pressure, you know. He's stopping first, and if he can intercept second, then that's great. Seems to sit better with him, and he did it very, very well. So I think... It does come with a bit of a risk, of course, because, you know, if we're paying 240k or whatever for him, in essence, we're paying an extra 120k for him rather than a rookie. So that's 120k that you don't have your hands on. But I really do think his upside is a lot better than some other rookies. We're going to have to have a look at what other rookies are available and how concrete their position in the side is. And I think that'll probably, at the end of the day, decide this selection. If we get to a point in the forward line, which I think at the moment is, is proving difficult to put your money confidently with anywhere other than Dangerfield and Heaney. There are other guys, but there aren't the locks that we've once had. Um, and I think of all positions, it's proving difficult to look and say, yep, that'll be the top three, four or five forwards. Very difficult. So given that, I think we're going to have a few rookie price players in our forward line. And if there aren't enough rookies to fill out, say, our last three positions on the field and the bench, then all of a sudden a guy like Moore becomes very important. Now, Setterfield's going to be a guy that many have. Rankin's very popular. Um, the young bulldog, is it Bailey Smith, I think, um, he was pretty popular as well. And while those guys are extremely talented and potentially could have great seasons, it doesn't always happen for top picks. We saw Davies Uniac look destined to be a very good, mature, you know, sort of type. Should come in AFL footy seamlessly. Really struggled to find his feet. So there is always risk with rookies and youngsters, even top 10 picks. With more, you've got a guy who's sort of found his feet, he's worked his way over the years, and starting to feel confident and working towards his prime, you know, when a breakout season could be on the cards. Um, I'm not going to go saying any too outlandish statements, but an average in the 80s is very, very possible, I think. Very, very possible. So um, watch him through the preseason. He might ping another hammy or, or get injured, and all of a sudden we put a line straight through him. But he should definitely be high on your watch list because he's a guy that's just too talented to not be considered at this stage of his career and given the way his career is starting to shape. And Collingwood definitely need him in that back six. So I'll be interested to hear your thoughts. As I always say, subscribe away and, and get involved with the comments also. If you've got any players you'd like me to take a look at or any sorts of videos that you might like to suggest, by all means, um, post those in the comments i'm not going to get around to too many comments be fair to say i always read them i see them come through via the email and have a look at them so i certainly appreciate them but um it is quite time consuming to try and get to absolutely every one of them 
Um, and I feel, you know, you're either all or nothing. You've either got to get all the comments or none of the comments. So just with, with work and, and, you know, other hobbies and things like that, I was finding it difficult to consistently get to every single one. So hopefully you guys appreciate that uh, my YouTube time will be put into um, delivering content rather than um, replying to individual comments. So um, thanks again for all your support. I'll be back soon with another player profile. Cheers.